Hi guys. So, um, as always, I like to start my video with uh, my new finds. And I found all these amazing books, right? Like The Primary School, The Principal of Our English. This seems like a story that I might read. Uh, I, I don't know. I was flipping through and I said, you know, I will not fight women. And there's like these women doing like a standoff in one of the pictures. And I was like, this seems interesting. But anyways, it's from 1909. So maybe I'll read this book. Um, and I was excited because I found these. These are like metal stamps and they're super awesome. I'm going to try to ink them and uh, see how they go. But they're like, um, I think they were like for advertisement or something. But look, they're on a wooden uh, stamp. And then this is like an engine block. Seems like, like it. I'm not sure. I have to stamp it to like really see what it is. But I was mostly excited about this. It's a Shakespeare Macbeth. Look at that. Oh my gosh, and it's in good shape, right? It's a, I'll show you right now. It's in 1907. But what interested me more on it, it says here, Harry Birch, formerly of Australia, now serving a life sentence in, I don't understand that word. See if you can see it. If you understand it, let me know what it is. It looks like it starts with a, a, an I, so I thought it was like Idaho, because it starts, it ends with the O, or something like that. But uh, something like that, state prison, uh, I think that's an A-C. I don't know, but it seems like this is that guy's writing. And I think this is the lady that wrote that, Miss Hollis Hollison. Uh... Pratt, and then Hollis Pratt, right here. So I'm gonna look up these people. I am, I wanna see, I wanna follow up with these people. Um, anyways, here's the craft time. Okay guys, so for today's project, we're gonna start uh, with the wings. I'm gonna use Sculpey and two different thicknesses of wire. After I have the basic shape of the wing with the thicker wire, I go back with this floor wire and um, kind of just wind it and work my pattern or my shape through it. But because I had for this video or this clip right here that I'm showing you right now, um, I had already done the other two sets. So there's two sets. So I've already done a first set. So what I'm doing is instead of like completely following the paper now, because you know, you change things as you're working on it as I also have to make sure that the, my, my little spool of wire goes through the thing. So um, I had to make a little bit of adjustments as I was working on it. So because of that, um, I was following the wing I had did previously rather than the one on the paper. Um, and I was just going back and forth. I kind of want them as even as possible. I mean, you're really not gonna like, you know, display the book as you can see it, but in my head, I would like it to be as even as possible um, for this book cover.
Okay, I made my body and I've made my legs and my wings. Now I baked it to the instructions of the paper or the package. And um, after that, I'm gonna paint it. I'm using um, uh, chalkboard paint. It's almost like gesso, it's pretty thick and it covers really well. So um, what I didn't show you on screen and I, I, I feel like I have to point out, before I baked it, I grabbed my knife and I made a lot of cuts on the bottom part, like on the butt part and um, back part to, to kind of resemble like a, a um, hairs because bees have hair or I don't know if that would be the term to call it. But um, yeah, so to resemble that, you know, texture that they have. And so when I'm going to go back with the paint, I'm going to start with white and it's like a very washed out white. In a sense, what I'm doing is I'm painting the highlights. Um, and so the cuts are black still. So it looks like the bottom part or the bottom layer of this white that I'm painting on is white. I mean, it's black. So it oddly enough, by painting white, it makes the layer feel like it was a black layer. I don't know if you know what I mean, but I do the same process with the yellow. I go back with a very um, brushed or dried brush technique and try to bring out the texture of the hair, um, like little cuts. And I just go back and forth. I think I did like three light layers on each level so that I can accentuate because the color was um, being kind of absorbed into the, the paint, the black paint. So it, as you guys can see, I would paint it like very yellow bright, but then it ended up being like washed out yellow. So it just took me a couple of times to do get it just to where I want it. Now the legs, um, I didn't want them a solid color, so I just used wax paint. And I brought up, brought some of that little wax paint paste onto the body just to kind of, you know, blend it together or bring it together. This is a very, very thick um, napkin. It's a napkin from a restaurant that uh, we went to go have in a date, my husband and I. And I kept the napkin. Uh, oddly, if coffee was spilled, they use these napkins. Uh, I, well, my husband and I used our napkins that we had on our table to clean it up. And then I noticed they were like just amazing. And it also reminds me of the night. So I, got, I kept all the napkins. And, um, but I'm going to use that napkin as the cover of my book. So for me to paint it, um, I used two different colors of green, as you noticed. I'm using um, coffee paper and coffee water, I mean, uh, tea water that I had next to me. But um, the color doesn't do it justice, like the screen. It's a really amazing and intense green, uh, like a deep um, grass color, I guess. I don't know. But it didn't rip, not even once. So. I don't remember what restaurant it was, but I wish I can remember and go back and get me a whole packet of these napkins. They're amazing. Um, what I'm doing here is I'm measuring the window that is going to go on the cover of the, of the book. And I'm doing it off to the side because I'm doing it while I'm letting my napkin dry on the table overnight.
In that window, I am going to attempt to make a sort of like a bees wax panel. Um, I'm going to use that same sculpey that I used for the wings and the body, and I'm going to make a slab. I'm going to start with the slab. And um, I pretty much just roll it out with the back of a brush and use the same window that I, the little piece that came out of the window to make it as a preference. Okay, for this step, I'm going to use the backs of these drill bits. Um, they are the shape of the honeycomb. And so I was, I'm going to use, I'm going to take advantage of the fact that all of them are the same pattern in the back. And I'm just going to stab it. I'm not going to go like one at a time because then by the time you stamp the next one, you misshape the first one that you stamped. So I'm going to keep it on there and then keep on stamping and then leaving them behind. And, and I will eventually recycle, but, by the, but I get, it has to come to a point where it doesn't misshape the one before. Anyways, when you're done, you should have something like this. And what I do next is just kind of pull it so it looks like honey uh, dripped or honey um, broken or I don't know. I felt like it was more of the shape of a honeycomb. Okay, so my dog did it. I was so mad. She's a good girl usually, but man, she messed up. Anyways, put a backing on my window, painted it black um, as the base coat. Then I went back with several colors. I'm going to use kind of the same colors that I'm going to use on the honeycomb. Okay, so on the honeycomb, I, or is it honeycomb or bees wax? Um, anyway, so I first did it the brownish, caramel brownish. Then I'm going back with a mustardy yellow or a golden yellow. Then I'm going to finish it off with the lighter yellow. So um, every layer that I paint is less detailed. So the first one, I super make sure I covered everything really good with the brown. Then with this one, I'm kind of like, you know, Hazard, haphazardly like throwing brushes in there and then with the other yellow that I'm going to use I barely brush it on like I'm barely I mean it looks like it's a very bright yellow but because I'm brushing it on so lightly and it, the paint is kind of still a little fresh it kind of mixes it in there and it makes these like multi you know color dimensional honeycomb and I really loved how it came out I covered the inside with an accountant sheet and then what I did to cover up the dog bite, I did uh, book covers, I mean book corners, but I only did it on the back, which is where it, um, the bite is. Um, I didn't want to ruin the effect or the idea that I had for the front cover, so I didn't use uh, corners for the front cover, only for the back. As part of my bee wax window um, that I have here, I'm going to pour it resting on this window. But so that it resin doesn't run all over the place, I'm sealing the edges first 
with uh, my silicone glue and I'm letting it dry overnight. Once that's done, when uh, drying, I put I pour my resin. It's two part um, resin, and I pour in first on the paper and make sure I cover it really well. Remember to blow uh, hot air on it to remove all the bubbles. So uh, don't worry while you're pouring in the the resin. It um it makes a lot of bubbles as you're like spreading it around. But if you use your hot air a gun or blow dryer, the, all the bubbles will go away. Since my resin came out of the window, I'm gonna make a frame for it, and I'm using a, um, a like a paper, ephemera paper and a little frame of the same color that I used the corners on the back of the book. Now, because the little edge of a of the bottom layer of that paper comes out through the through the other side, I'm painting it so that it doesn't show that much. Okay, so I wasn't too sure how I was going to do the the whole setup or attachment of the wings and the bee. So I'm going to do a two-part step, two-part or yeah, two-part thing. I'm going to attach the wings here first and I attach them to each other via a spring. That way there's a little bit of flexibility and I don't break things. Um, I attach them with the same flower or floral floral cable and I'm gonna attach the tips of the wings from here to the inside and then come make a little design and then come around this side to hold the wings in place and then maybe do another thing to hold this side or come through this side I don't know but I'm gonna attach this to the back and this to the back so this is mounted to here individually from the bee body
Mixing two part epoxy to glue magnets to the back of my body so that it I can put magnets inside my spine and then attach my um, body of my bee to the spine and I can easily remove it if I want to work on it or if I choose to remove it um, and then I can put it back in and back off however I can. Now, because I'm attaching two magnets close to each other, the key is to please let one of the sides dry first, then once that's completely hardened and dried, attach the other part. But the trick is that um, the other part needs to be held. This glue um, dries in about 10 minutes, this epoxy. So I sat here and I held on to the magnet so it doesn't want to join the other magnet next to it. Then to cover all my ugly underside of the bee, I'm just using a book page and covering it, then I want to paint it black on top of it. I just didn't want another thick layer to be heavy, and I didn't want a thick layer on top of my magnet, magnet so that there's not that much, like, you know, division between, not division, but wall between the two magnets. I already have the spine, so the less interception I have between my magnets and the magnets from inside the spine to the magnets outside the spine. Remember, to blow uh, hot air on it to remove all the bubbles. So uh, don't worry while you're pouring in the, the resin, it um, it makes a lot of bubbles as you're like spreading it around. But if you use your hot air uh, gun or blow dryer, the, all the bubbles will go away. So the spine um, like support has a double function. One, it holds the magnets to support the bee on the outside. And two, it holds the strings that I'm gonna use to for binding or for holding my signatures together. right here maybe uh, you know some ephemera there but you know this thing does, well, this thing um, removes as you guys know um, it's held on pretty tight if you don't put it right then it will fall easily but if you put it on right then it won't it's a little heavier um, this I guess, this is my first time experimenting with uh, uh, sculpting and I could have made 
made it easier be uh, lighter if I wanted to like in the future because like for example this layer there's a bottom layer and then these are all additional layers and then the eyes are almost solid so you know I could have made smaller eyes and I could have made them non-solid so um you know it weighs I wish I knew but it, it, it's not light for what it is you know and I do have magnets on it I the, you know I piled on like three magnets on each on each little thing and then um, it works fine now for it to let me open it for it to look good opened the legs don't go all the way through all the way in so what I can do is I can draw hand draw like the rest so it just gives you that resemblance when it's like um what is it called uh, uh being used but um i love how it came out i love 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 how it came out these are the little antenna antennas and so this is removable and this this looks cool kind of like as it is because you can imagine still the bee here um these are the little wire bees this one looks more like a flower to me or maybe like an angel rather than a bee but um i worked on it and the back one i feel looks a little bit more like a bee but i don't know and these are uh the little specimen chart thingies that i drew all of these will be available on for the patrons uh for download i put a little bit i look i put some pockets on the back of these I put a tag on this and then a tag on the tag. So, uh, let's see. And then I put, made a little like booklet and I wrote, I kind drew some lines and just, you know, threw some stuff together. These are all uh, coffee dyed paper. Um, now I, I just uh, as a overview, the paper, goes around this but half of it is glued to this and then half of it is glued to this but then the signature is attached to the middle um and it, it holds up fine uh I, I like that uh i didn't have to put like the paper in here because i i didn't want to interrupt this window setup uh these are more drawings uh -huh. This is another pocket, a little card, and more paper, more bees, and another card thing imaging her. Mm. More paper, another bee. And another pocket, another thingamajinger, and I drew some lines on it. Um, and here's the back. I am going to be putting on here my signature makers, my makers label, maybe on this. Yeah, let's use that. I am going to use marker and I'm gonna make the signature here so that I can attach it there and then I'm gonna put the year can't believe 2022 already and it's all on the way out the door anyway so like that I think I like it like this better never forget to sign your work you know this is your piece of art so it's kind of, you know, to me, it's like, you know, you're talking to your future self, to your future maker self. And it's also, you know, if you're going to gift it or sell it, you know, you need to sign your work. I try to put it here or in the back uh, outside. But here's the other bee right there. I had a little bit of extra wire, so I did that little tail thingy. And here's the back very sturdy i love this product um you'll probably see me using a lot more of it i loved the product very hard very sturdy if i needed to make a hole i made a hole 
here so that the the um, magnet sits on well um and it was so easy to carve I, I cut some of this off after i baked it and it was so easy just so that the the wings would fall in there quickly um not quickly um so they would sit there properly but yeah so this is how that goes Oh my goodness, look how pretty this looks. And when it sits on my bookshelf, it's gonna sit like this. I might drill, not drill, but like make little holes right here um, to put look, the Antonitas. These are the legs, I mean the hands, because the bee has six legs. So these are the legs, not the Antonitas. I was mistaken earlier. And then what I'm gonna do here, and then so that way it goes like that. It would be so cute. But, you know, it's not a typical bee. It's like my whimsical style bee. Um, you know what? Maybe I'll put some eyelashes because these resembles a skirt to me. I don't know. A, a person being crazy. But anyways, I hope you guys liked this book. I hope you enjoyed the journal. And I hope you enjoyed, you know, the new techniques um, that I applied to here. Uh, let me know what you guys think, what you guys would have done different, or what you guys could see yourself using in the future. I really love to hear you guys' comments. They mean the world to me. I really appreciate your encouraging words. Um, you know, most makers out here doing YouTube, we make, we do it for, like, free. We, we have to, like, set time apart from our family, from our work, or, you know, in my case, my business. Um, to come and create in front of the camera. I love to create as it is, and I already create and make on the side. There's a lot of things I make that is not like journal related. So sometimes I feel like maybe I shouldn't put it in the channel. Sometimes I do put it in the channel, but a lot of things I don't put in the channel just because I make other things like furniture and other things that are not so relevant to, to um, you know, the book world. But, um, you know, I might consider putting some here and there later. But, um, yeah, I hope you guys like it. And, you know, you guys support us, you know, by, you know, that thumbs up. Like, it's it's, it's like, um, like a heart payment, you know. Like, it just lets us know that you love that we put the time apart to record what we're, when we're creating. It, you know, it, it makes, like, when you're making something, it makes, um... It takes things longer because now you got to worry about, you know, put it in front of the camera. You know, you got to worry about recording. Like for me, it's just I've been making stuff for such a long time without recording. So I am still messing up. I am still like not checking that the, you know, camera is recording. So I'm like making all into my making and I forget that the camera is not recording and not checking and like or it died <laughs> or you know it's full memory or something and it's like it's still really hard for me sometimes but um you know i'll get better as time goes by you know i use i used to never like be able to talk to you like how i am now you know before it was like all you know after and over voice over recording and like now i'm able to like sit here and talk to you via camera Anywho, um, thank you so much for, you know, taking your time and, you know, um, giving us a thumbs up and encouraging, you know, if you haven't subscribed, you know, consider subscribing. I do like to make stuff, books, but other, other stuff as well, if you're ever curious about it. Also, you know, I am not 100% consistent on a day I release the video. So if you guys, you guys want like some kind of, um, you know notice you can hit the little bell and it'll let you know when i have uploaded a video i am sorry it did take me two weeks off i had to travel for work um so i it's not i had to take the weeks off but i kind of had to take the weeks off because i had to go out of town but um love you guys so so much i love the crafter community because you guys are very encouraging i love all of you guys I love to think that you are with me. I'm craft. You are crafting as I am crafting. And, you know, if you're anything like me, I know you're crafting while watching this video. And that is really awesome because it feels like we're together, you know, working together in a unified kind of universe, you know. <laughs> um, anyways, love you guys uh, to pieces. 
I, um, I can't wait to hear from you guys. Until next time, stay safe and stay crafting. Bye.